it's Lauren Yates from Raven Up here, and today we're going to be having a chat to Canadian actor Kerry James, who you may know playing Caleb O'Dell in the TV show Heartland. Kerry, welcome to Raven it Up. It is a pleasure to have you on the show today. How are you going? <laughs> good, really good. Yeah, home from work and. I kind of been looking forward to this. I thought it'd be fun. Oh, thank you for agreeing to come on. I know you're probably really busy, so I appreciate your time. No, really, this is fun. I, I, yeah, not, not too busy for this, that's for sure. And it's great to finally have you on the show, as we just discussed before we started taping, that I've had Graham on, Amber, Michelle, Sean and Jessica, all of your co-stars. So it's about time that we have you on too, right? Yeah. <laughs> And we hear your side of the story as well. <laughs> Ooh, that makes me curious. Oh, well, we might bring up some stuff. You can chat about them too. <laughs> uh, sure. Now, it is, since it is the first time, you know, you've been on this show, we'd love to actually start from the beginning and get a good idea of how you've made it to where you are today, if that's okay. I did do a bit of research on you and you're the third son of four, I read. So how was it growing up yeah. in, in quite a big family like that? It must have been a um, noisy household. Yeah, I guess you could say that. There's a lot of moving around and stuff. I don't really, um, I don't know. I grew up pretty like rural town. My, my dad was RCMP, so there was lots of transfers. So I think I just got really good at like new beginnings and taking risks because I mean, that's how you survive as a kid who moves a lot. And um, when you grew up in rural roots, the city's an exciting place. So like, where are you gonna go next, right? It's pretty natural sense. I um, I actually, like, I've recently, like, like, getting into like why acting is actually like kind of a complicated question. It took me a long time to understand. Um, it wasn't for like any classic reason. I think maybe the idea of fame attracted me, but more than anything, like, I knew I, knew I really liked movies. I didn't really know what it meant to make them. I just knew I wanted to have something to do with them. And that, even acting, like it largely just had to do with the fact that it's, like, I remember being in high school and being like, I, I don't want to do anything. I just want to do whatever I want to do. And I think acting or at least being an artist is the closest thing to that. Mm. Well, I heard you were doing yeah. like quite a bit of basketball and sports in school. Was that more the path you were thinking of going down? No, no. Like I, <laughs> it's so funny to say that, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I think everything in life to me is just kind of a hobby, if I'm being completely honest. And I don't mean that in any like negative effect, like goal setting. My thing is just that like, I ha get obsessed with like whatever the next thing is, whether that's like volleyball or basketball or swimming or a million other different things I try. But when I try something new and I enjoy it, I'm like, well, I have to at least get good at it. Like that's just my thing. And so I just, I do that. And acting, I think, and the film industry offers enough consistent diversity. They're always shaking it up, and that's fun for me. So many different paths you can go down in, in film. You can go down directing, writing, producing, and of course acting. So it is very exciting. But you also were yeah. really good at basketball. You know, I read that you won a championship in 2003 and even won MVP at the tournament. That's incredible. Yeah, no, I was just a very athletic kid. My body is just my instrument. Everyone's got their own language and their own way of expressing themselves. I'm just very in my body. And so that just translated to a lot of sports. But no, I never wanted to go pro at anything. I'm also like, like I'm... I'm I don't know. Yeah, it just wasn't my path. And a lot of this stuff happened in like smaller places in, in Canada. Like, you know, we're not talking about the same level of competition that exists in like America. Like that's totally a ballgame. Um, but, but I'll tell you, I had a hell of a good time. Like I straight up had a hell of a good time. And I did. Like I don't have a lot of regrets in my life because I do give myself to whatever I'm doing. And so I just enjoy everything. And even even that even makes like you know, the feast and famine as far as the famine time of being an artist, not so bad because you actually just can't help but immerse yourself in whatever you're experiencing, which makes everything a constant rebirth place. And there's admitted hypocrisy in that, obviously, you know, ups and downs in terms of embracing that, but yeah. That's very deep. Did you also do like drama at school as well, or did the acting more come after you left school? Um, no, I did do drama. Um, drama was an elective, but I just liked it. And all the girls, all the girls took drama. Like, why, why wouldn't I? Just had to sign up. Yeah, and then in, uh, in grade twelve, I remember like grade twelve was like my first play that I, you know, since like elementary school, being a lot younger. Like, I wasn't a very good student. I did not attend a lot of class. 
I generally tested quite well, but as far as attendance records, I know, like I was a terrible student. And so drama, like I needed, I needed some credits to graduate. And, um, and so I did a play for those extra credits and, uh, and I accidentally loved it. And I don't think I realized then that a huge part of that was, um, just the amount of like interconnectivity that exists when you work with people during a play. I was very drawn to that type of collaboration, which I think also made me want to be part of film as an adult. It's just, it's so collaborative. Well, I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason, so maybe it, you're just meant to go down that, that path of acting. Otherwise, we would never have had you on Heartland. <laughs> right? And, like, I'm also very realistic, too. Like, that's... I technically... Like, it's funny, but it's like, I did it. I did it. I got... Heartland, and it has been a hell of a ride. But I haven't really worked successfully on anything else since. So as far as I know, like this, this the acting ride, like I will chase it forever because I love it. And I don't think I could stop, but it could also amount to never necessarily working again. And that That's also allowed to be true if it is. Like I have to be more than just something I'm chasing or I get depressed. As long as you love it, right? And I can see the passion on your face. <laughs> yeah, I definitely love it. And I've had a look at your Instagram just recently when I was doing my research on you, and it looks like you're quite an outdoorsy person, like your bushwalks and just recently handstands on the beach. That's pretty cool. And in your bio, you did write that you're a lover of this life, which I can see, uh, and deeply in pursuit of creativity and spiritual evolution. Please tell us more about this spiritual evolution. I can already get a vibe that you're very spiritual already. <laughs> well, I like to be careful with the word spiritual because to me, everything is like, I don't know how to like word this in a way. I think that the mind is an incredibly, like I, I have to rationalize everything. I am a man of science at root. So I actually have worked hard to find ways of, of understanding. Okay, ready? We're going to get super deep for a second. A gentleman named Stuart Hameroff, who is a neuroscientist and anesthesiologist, he has proved this. This is an inarguable fact. Um, and he did this through some fascinating experiments, and he has won a Nobel Peace Prize or a Nobel Prize for this, excuse me, in science. Um, so you, you, anyone who's interested can just look him up. Stuart Hameroff, exactly how it sounds. He proved that consciousness isn't actually coming from within the human mind, but it, it, there's a field of awareness, as he words it, that is simply passing through all of this right reality, whether that is connected to gravity or or some other force, which it probably would, because all of these forces of nature seem to act in tandem. So it seems only natural that perhaps that too is tied to the earth in some, se in some sense. So as that field of awareness passes through anything, anything that will house consciousness or can, just does. And that's, that's all of us. What makes us uniquely different is the biological and chemistry of our body. My physiology is different than yours. Our brains are literally different. So as that awareness passes through us, we have different experiences and different ideas within to our intersubjectivity of our physical bodies. So that's spirituality in a nutshell. And to simplify that, what do I mean by that? This organ is incapable of incredible things. There are parts of it completely unmapped by science, and we all know inside ourselves through the different facets of emotional shifts in that, that there are different parts of us. There's one person at the helm. We're a bunch of shifting states. I think that's inarguable, except to crazy people who have very glassy eyes. <laughs> so when I say spirituality, for me, my mind through growing up, I've been programmed to connect with certain symbols as things that offer me joy and hope and certain symbols that offer me negativity. So when I experience my version of spirituality, it's going to be peppered with my own personal mythos, my own symbols from my childhood. And that stands true for all of us. So if I need to see, for example, Jesus Christ filtered through this, that's who I call on and may visualize when I'm feeling at my weakest. Likewise, it's true for any other deity or ancestor or whatever you need to call on. And so I use cheeky, simple metaphors like we're, there's enough stars for us to have all of our own gods and goddesses from. 
Well, I'm very spiritual too, so I'm actually glad that I have someone on the show to like talk about that because I never have. So thank you. Chill, cool. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm not too I'm not too abashed by this stuff because I've worked very hard to understand and, and you know, lean on people who have done incredible work and research to tie physics and physiology to this idea of spiritual, which is largely just this place of such unexplained energy. Everyone knows there's more to this than not. And any any real scientist, when you quarter them tipsy at a party, they'll confess. They'll confess how little we know. Well, hopefully you've actually changed some people's perception and, and you know, ideas about this. So thank you. Oh, uh, you're welcome. If, if not, it's too bad. It's fun. It's fun to play with these things. It was a fun chat for us anyway. <laughs> yeah. And your birthday is August 2nd. Mine is the 30th of August. We're both August babies and it is coming up soon. Do you have any celebration plans yet or is that more of a last minute thing? <laughs> okay, well, as you know, and you have to say this too, like, um, or maybe it's different in Oz. I don't, I don't know. But up here, like, that's, that's when school's out, right? So it's actually like the middle of summer. So birthdays were never like a big thing for me because everyone was scattered, especially in small towns. Like, we were never around. So I had those like really horrible family birthdays surrounded with your like, yeah, yeah, except yeah, just like your cousins and aunts and uncles. When you know when you're at that age, where you're just like, wow, I wish I was with my friends. But now I'm reflecting back, what a tremendous great I was. <laughs> like I had amazing birthdays. Um, that said, I'll probably be on uh, Vancouver Island with uh, with my brother and my mom and dad. Oh, that's I mean, nice. Yeah. Still keeping oh, up the family nice. birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Tradition. And before we move on to talk about, you know, your acting career, a lot of our listeners have actually been wanting to know how others, and especially the people on my show, the people they look up to, have been getting through this whole coronavirus pandemic. So what have you been doing to get through COVID, especially like mental health wise? Okay. Um, for me, and I know for everyone it was different, um, it was like I needed this. I needed this real bad. Um, F the economy. <laughs> Listen, man, if the system can't support the people needing a certain amount of time off truly, then the whole thing deserves to crumble. It needs restructuring. Screw it. It taught me that, that life matters again. And, and I was, I was even like in ways of trying to fight for myself, even in having an acting career in that I was, I had embraced. So I didn't even notice, but I'd embraced that like shoulder to the grindstone mentality. And that translated to everything I was doing, even my fitness at the time. Everything was about getting like better for film. Even my days at work, like in construction, which is like my, my, my day job, I just was giving myself entirely away. And it seemed, it seemed so senseless in retrospect, but I have COVID to thank for that. I think a lot of people will identify with the fact that we all needed the world to stand still for a little while so that we could gather ourselves and that's not to say that we're all going to run off like hippies and not get back to it obviously structure must exist the economy itself is not inherently evil nor nor is any institution inherently we, we need things to happen for us and we all need to participate in that but i think that we need to, we're all going to reflect largely on how we spend our free time and where we wish to invest ourselves and i think countries like the town that will like start to stand out a lot more as far as like happiness being a point of wealth over other things and that that's why on instagram now since things have been letting up i've been wandering everywhere outside i have no reason not to and it's too bad that i haven't been this whole time i completely yeah. agree we all just needed that time to rest and get back to ourselves and kind of reevaluate our whole lives and how we're going to move right. forward yeah and i mean obviously once this is truly all over and people are like we're done talking about second waves and other scary things like once things settle down truly there will be a certain level of regression like this never happened that's inevitable that's inevitable it's too bad and i'll be honest as one of the people at the very beginning i was maybe a lot more hopeful that things were going to be a little more dramatically shaped as we came out of the back 
that is, but it is what it is. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. <laughs> right. Thank you. I hope, um, you know, especially people that have been really struggling through this time, it's hopefully helped them as well. I did like a whole episode on our podcast about, you know, how we can get out of COVID stronger because I know a lot of people have been struggling, but, you know, you've got to look at the positives of it all and that, you know, you can, yeah, have a lot more me time and, and relax, you know? and everything will get back to normal eventually. <laughs> we've all been putting that off for so many years. Like since most of us became adults, we have been putting that off. Since summer vacation stopped existing for us and two weeks a year amounts to literally not enough. It's not even a whisper of time. Um, we forgot how to act. Like it was only natural that we were gonna face off with our shadows. Some of us are gonna go to some pretty dark, sad, scary places. I know that I felt, I, I needed stress to, to thrive, I thought. I went through decompression, like a lot of us. You know, it took about four days before I could actually chill out. And then there was a few days of just like, of that shame of helplessness. Of like, how do I, what do I do? Like, I should be using this time for something. After like the sixth day, I just was like, I'm gonna act like an animal. And then I was a total sloth for like two, three days. And then things just started happening. Like creativity started happening, productivity started happening fitness started to be something that was unplanned and just tended to itself i kind of loved it yeah looks like you're progressing well looking at instagram <laughs> i guess yeah right yeah thank you you're welcome it's, it's a lot of hard work but you know even after co you'll be going to be coming out with a bang now that heartland's right. been renewed you know you'll be probably even busier <laughs> i hope so i hope so if I'm lucky. Uh, we will talk about Heartland very, very soon because I know there's a lot of Heartland fit fans yeah, listening today. Welcome. But actually, I also want to chat about other shows and movies that you have been on. First of all, you were on Geek Charming back in 2011. That's really cool. How was your experience with that? What was your favorite part about working on on that? Um, Man, that the two kids that... Wow, I shouldn't tell these stories. I don't know. <laughs> My favorite part, God, there wasn't a lot of favorite parts about being on that project. The, the two leads, those kids are crazy. I mean, like, lovable, forgivable, young, but out of their damn minds. And just, uh, yeah, like, those kids were mayhem. I saw some shit. Um, I never, like, yeah, straight up, those kids suck um, to work with. They, they, but we were, they were young. They were super young. Maybe they've matured immensely since then. But as like a very chill individual, it was there was sort of an enormous pleasure in the fascination of just standing there and witnessing uh, some of the strangest human behavior I've ever seen. Like, you know, the chairs being thrown and yelling fits. It was quite, we were all just like, as Canadians, we were all just like, this is uh, a fascinating display of human behavior. So yeah, that was my favorite part of that. <laughs> yeah, it was very interesting. I bet no one's told that truth, right? Yeah, no, that and that kid, not the girl. The girl was kind of a sweetheart. The girl, the girl was all right. I'm sorry, I don't know her name. I don't watch like I watch everything names. I'm just terrible with. Yeah, so I don't, I don't really know these people in real life, right? Like I was, I was part of that for like nine days. So, so. yeah, quick, quick in and out, and then on to the next project. <laughs> and you were in um the Perfect Bride in 2017, and then there was a sequel in 2018. Um, I actually haven't seen those. Yeah, I haven't actually seen those two films yet. But looking at like the trailer and stuff, I, I actually really want to watch it now. Looks my like my type of film. A very tiny role. I think they're super super cute movies. I never seen the whole thing, but I was there for the filming of them, and I must say they're adorable. I think, and the whole cast was incredibly lovely and charming, and I had nothing but a good time. And I, I was only there for maybe like four days on the first one and six days on the next, just a few little scenes again, but. I don't know, as an actor, like, I'll just, I have so much fun with any role. And that's the job. Is, is, is when it, I don't think any one role could ever really sate the creativity inside us, but like, it is our job to just give 100% of our creativity and, and just play to these projects. And Hallmark's one of the most fun things in the world to play on. They really are. Hallmark, Hallmark rocks. I love Hallmark. I haven't seen too many of them, but that's because I only have Netflix, so. <clears throat> well, you need to now. <laughs> and are comedies like your favorite to work on or do you have a favorite genre? Um, I don't know that I have a favorite genre that I'd like to work on. Um, if I had to be part of a show that ran for like nine years, I think I would prefer to go into work every day to laugh. I think that would be from a very like realistic vantage of like, man, 
I think that going to work to play for nine years, uh, that sounds like a lot, a lot more fun. And then like those thriving indie projects, which I've only been part of in some really small capacities, but when I did, I loved them. Like that's the fire and play of acting. It's also exhausting. I feel like if I had to do three or four year projects, hell yeah, I'd be all over that. But by year five, I just feel like I want to die like my character does. (laughs) (laughs) I have that heard that about indie films. A lot of people just love being in them. They're just such great projects. They're the best. I like I don't really I haven't been a part of too many of them, but I'm I'm down. They seem they're so cool and they're the best films and kind of the most groundbreaking of them. So I like them. Well, hopefully with this interview, you get more. Hopefully. Hey, guys. Hire me for Indie Films. They're my thing. Now, with Heartland, we got to chat about it because it's such a big yeah. part of your life. Can you please bring us back to the beginning? You know, how was the audition process? And was Caleb someone that, you know, you just immediately were interested in playing? I had a weird feeling about it when I auditioned for it. Like, it seems like just, I don't know. I was just like, this is, this makes sense. And then I was like, I was on the short list and I think I was on hold for it. Some other kid had booked it, I believe. Is the story? I don't want hundred percent though, but either scheduling conflicts or something about the kid wasn't uh, confident in writing or whatever. So they, it didn't work out or something. I don't know, but I know that I was, uh, I was like the number two killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the list might've even extended a bit further than this other people that uh, had passed for other reasons, but um it is literally the best thing that ever happened to me as far as like uh just wild unexpected adventures in my life no no it wasn't a cowboy didn't ride the whole equestrian world was pretty new to me did you have to learn on set did you yeah yeah wow (laughs) that's a big thing to learn (laughs) yeah well yeah but if you're excited like i said like my thing is to get good at things and i tend to get good at things quickly because i enjoy the tedium of practice and I don't when you really like stuff you just figure it out really fast and I was like 20 I was like 21 or 20 or something like they were like let's get you on this horse and you have to learn how to like lope around today okay like who what 21 year old kid says no to that I was living a complete dream I don't even know if at the that first year like I don't really know if I knew where Caleb started or like where I was or where either of us ended, it was just one big overwhelming joy ride. That is so exciting too, because you get to go in there and do your acting, which you love, but then also yeah. to just learn yeah. something completely new. Yeah, well, I'm like, I, I don't even know if I did love acting truly in the first, I don't know that I knew what it was. Like I sucked in season two, I was bad. I leaned heavily on some natural charm, <laughs> which floated me through that season, but I was terrible. If, if it wasn't for a few of our directors, and largely Chris Potter, who was like, all right, there's something here, but let's mold this. It's, this is pretty bad right now. It's pretty raw. Um, if it wasn't for him and a few people that took me under their wings, I would never have understood the craft. And that's just the acting side. The director and then our DOPs and camera operators. Like, when you get to be a young kid and part of something that runs this long, you get to cross over territory. You get to become a family with people. And people are taking you under their wing to show you what they do and how to understand. And you accidentally, that builds onto what your craft is as an actor. And so, yeah, like Heartland was and is my crash course in acting. I was terrible before this. Like, horrendous. <laughs> I don't know why they let me come back. Just watch the recent stuff. He's very good at what he does now. <laughs> Thank you. I think I'm I think I've evolved a lot. I think I I think I do a pretty good job of playing Caleb. You really do. And that's just really surprised me that you didn't even know how to ride because obviously your character really knows how to ride and, you know, does bronc riding and everything. I'm guessing you guys use stunt doubles for that then, or did you learn a bit of that too? Oh, for the bronc riding? Oh, yeah, the bronc riding stuff? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. I die. I mean, I've tried it. I got fucked up. But, like, to do that, are you kidding me as an actor? With like, no, you need to grow up understanding how to do that. That's one of those like things you cannot, maybe you can, but you don't learn things without breaking things. And nah, this this old boy, no way. Rody always talk about challenging athletic events. There's no way, there's no way I can learn that. 
No, it's too epic. Well, I no, think your your acting is really good, and obviously your comp like the confidence that comes across in the character because you know just watching it, we're like, oh, he knows what he's doing. Caleb, yep, he's been around all this all the rodeo wow. for years. <laughs> I don't know. I just it's so much fun that I forget to be afraid maybe when I should be because <laughs> I know some of the other actors in that are like, whoa, you're getting a little. But I'm like, no, it's okay. We're making TV. Everything's fine. Like, I don't know. I go into that. But, and I think I broadcast it loudly. The animals seem to, I don't know if they like look at me and are like, this idiot. We'll just make sure he's okay. I don't know. But nothing ever really seems to go too horrendously wrong when I'm around doing some silly stuff. And yeah, I've been known to push the envelope as far as they'll let me. Because, I mean, why would not? God, that would a waste of life not to push the are you really just gonna like walk the horse in every time like they tell you or are you gonna be like no it's the last take like who cares if i die of course i'm gonna come riding in. you're 21 naturally what a fun life i love it <laughs> so you're the one that pushes the envelope a little bit with the crew <laughs> no you're not doing that yeah i am <laughs> And you have been on the show since 2008, which is a long time, and I'm sure that must get quite repetitive, like anything for that long. I have asked your other co-stars this, because I think it is a very, you know, important question to ask. How do you yeah. keep it fresh and interesting and fun for yourself, you know, after so many years playing the same character? Well, the secret for me is that Caleb is actually used in a very reduced capacity so it is the time and construction in between that makes me thrive as caleb when i show up i'm it's brand new again and i'm excited and grateful to be there and that is impossible if you are there day in and day out that is a much more difficult job amber amber marshall and graham Wardle's job and alicia's job are significantly more challenging than my own they don't get time right when they're when they're working they're working and that is an incredibly taxing thing. It's very different than coming out for four to eight days a year to, to play. And, and that's maybe a huge part of it. And I hate to admit that. I hope that if I'm ever given the opportunity to be a lead of a series, like in a much larger capacity, that I just remember this and bring the steam the whole time. Because I don't want to run out of energy. And I haven't seen all of the show, but when I do see some of the show, I've seen some of the scenes that I've done, I think that Caleb at least generally seems to seem like he's having a lot more fun than some of the other. And I think I think I'm proud of myself for bringing that new energy every time I'm there. Yeah, it's a little bit of carry into Caleb. <laughs> I bet, yeah. I love that. And like even Michelle's answer was really um, good too because she said with you know like a show like Heartland, every single script is different. So for her, it's always coming in with like something new and going, oh okay, this is happening today, or you know I'm with this guy today, and things like that. So it kind of keeps it fresh and interesting for her anyway. I don't think you have to stress if you're you know when when you uh, end up being a main character in a show, <laughs> a lead. <laughs> if it's meant to be. In the future, I really think it will happen for you. All my Fingers are crossed for you. <laughs> and who do you think is the funniest person and also the most serious person on set? Do you think funniest most, would be you? <laughs> I think the funniest is probably me. Yeah. I don't think anyone uh, holds a candle to that, that level of um, And the most serious person? Gosh. You know what? I'm going to go out there and say Graham. Graham, really? <laughs> Graham, Graham can be a very, like, he can be very... I don't know. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful process. He can be very controlled for Ty. He makes Ty work beautifully and, and he uses um, the style of acting for that. So he can be very serious. He likes it. And, and that seriousness can come up with a lot of joy at play too. It's just, he, yeah, he's more serious about life than I am. Are you guys very playful offset like you are, you know, with your characters as well? Oh yeah. Actually, to be honest with you, I think that, I think, and maybe I'm way overstepping bounds here. But I think that a lot of Ty and Caleb's uh, relationship is actually just based off of me and Graham's actual... I think they watch the two of us like idiots just ping pong off each other into like epic adventures every weekend and every day that they were like, wow, we should maybe just steer the storyline a little bit that way. And they did. For a few years, they really made those two playful and a lot of that stuff, though entirely different storylines, just just emulates the actual uh, playful absurdity of our lives. I don't think I'm going to watch the show the same way again now. I'll just be like, oh, yeah, that's just Carrie and Graham, just <laughs> me and idiots. <laughs> yeah, then, then there's a lot of that. Like, we, we have killed ourselves laughing. 
both like like during action and after. Like it's it's fun. Must be uh, quite a hard to then get back on track after laughing heaps. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, lots of that. Like okay, gotta be serious now. The crew's getting frustrated. We gotta do this scene. <laughs> No, we've Laugh been later. No, we've been there. We've been there a few times. Grave and I try to have too much fun. We forget that we're at work. Hey, it's a fun job. I can see why. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. Almost like just very selfishly, I'm glad it is what I chose to do because I think being an actor when you are working is the coolest, cushiest, most fun job in the world. Someone and you know, like they're like, oh really? But what if you have to like jump naked in the freezing ocean? I'm like, you don't want to just do that for fun? Someone's now giving you the opportunity and there's going to be a safety team there. I, I was going to do this anyway. So to me, I'm like, yeah, no, acting is the most fun and cushy job in the entire world. And obviously, as we've been saying, a very, um, an amazing uh, learning tool for you as well. Enormously, yeah. That's great. You're really growing as a human in the process. <laughs> and what do you hope will happen to or for Caleb in the next season, season 14? Um, I think he like doesn't, um, does he have a baby? I can't remember. Um, excuse me. <laughs> I know it's been a while since I've seen the last season because there's been such a big break, but pretty sure they announced she's pregnant, so you're about to be a dad, I think. So I guess the family side of Caleb. My super cheeky answer is just, I hope that Caleb will be around a whole lot more than he usually is. There you go. That's all. Uh, just whatever. He could be knocking the stalls. Be like, hey, guy. Hey, Amy. Hi there, baby's name. Hi, my baby's name. Hi, Cassandra? My wife? <laughs> you already forgot your wife's name. <laughs> it's pretty bad, right? It's pretty bad. Definitely an actor. Definitely an actor. Yeah, you just memorize your lines, and then once it's done, you just forget about it. <laughs> kind, kind of, a little bit. And it's like, I think I think Heartland is a super, I think it's a super cool show. I really do. It's, it's, it's awesome. I've seen it sometimes, and it grabs me, and I'm like, wow, I didn't expect it. You know, and sometimes I, you know, maybe just for self-deprecating reasons, I joke about it a little, but... For what it is, man, it's an amazing little show full of, like, there's some there's some pretty damn good acting on there and some pretty cool people. So. And great storylines and, like, what I love about it, because, you know, I've watched it from the beginning, that there's not many shows out there like it, you know? It's, it's very real. It's things people can relate to. It's, you know, very much about love and family. And, you know, it's... That, couldn't recommend it highly enough to everybody. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Well, I like it too. So I'm really, I'm loving all these interviews with the cast because I watch the show. So I, I feel like I already know you guys, but then when I do an interview, I'm like, yeah, you're nothing like a character, but in a good way. Like, it's funny how different people really can be, right? Yeah, like that's I couldn't great. even believe when I uh, had such a blast talking to Sean last week, and you know, we we're chatting for like. I think in total, like an hour and a half, not even with just the interview. Don's a cool, cool guy. He's a cool dude, man. That but one he's just so one. different from Jack, you know? Even I was like, oh, wait yeah. a minute, you change your voice a little bit on the show because he doesn't sound like that. He's a real actor, yeah. Like, like Sean is no joke. He's got his, he knows his craft and he knows it well. And yeah, it even took me time when I was working with him to, to even really like adapt to how different he is between Pip and Jack. Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty skilled dude, that is for sure. And even just the little things he's had to do to make him look older. Because, you know, he started the show when he was in his 40s, and he has to be this oh, grandpa. Yeah, now great-grandpa. It's hours in makeup every day for him. Like, that's like the full, like, that's the true acting experience. Yeah, they age him up. Like, it's it's amazing what they do. That whole uh, makeup department does, like, amazing work on that. Yeah, it really does. It's always incredible. I'm like, I'm never, as I said, I'm never going to watch the show the same way again. Now all these little... T tips and secrets that I'm learning. <laughs> and there are so many Heartland fans all around the world. Have you had any uh, like weird or strange fan encounters that uh, are even ones that I guess touched your heart as well? Um, I've had lots recently that have touched my heart. Um, I've just been recently posting a lot more on Instagram, especially during COVID. And I, I actually come like, like, thank God for Instagram, the modern era for artists. Because as a platform for an artist who just desires to create and express, thank God for Instagram. Like, I don't even care, right? Like, it's just like, it makes it so much easier to just be like, boom. And you feel like you're just like, yeah, artist, express it, done. Um, but I've just been sharing a lot more about myself and that and the ways that I do view the world and how I think about things. And um, in that, I've shared, 
I haven't just tried to share like those peak moments, but I'm also pretty open and without like a without a whimpering sense of like self victimization, but just being open about those those waves and who we are and like ups and downs. And I'm not talking about like I don't I'm fortunate I don't have extreme mental health issues, but I am just like I've been getting so much feedback from people who seem to be just like. It is refreshing to see someone being honest about their ups and downs. I have been compelled to feel like I should hide these things. And then I'm starting to notice that with people that I follow back in that, and you know, like I follow a lot of people that I find interesting, and, and most of them I accidentally find just because they're um, following me or whatever, but people are sharing more of themselves openly and shamelessly. And I, that maybe, even if it's just a few people, I feel pretty proud of that. So I've been getting a ton of that, like really positive feedback from people who just are like, it, it feels good to have someone show that this is okay, that you don't have to like, that like, like being perfect or together doesn't have to be, yeah, it's okay. And even what you're showing today, I think it's incredible that you're, you know, really sharing your story and, and what you've been through. Straight up, and this is maybe for some people taking it too far, I don't trust people who have pre-prepared dialogue. I just don't. If you can't stand, ground, breathe, passionately tell me about what you think and feel, you're lying to yourself before you talk to me. And I just am not interested. And, and maybe that was what I meant when I said that cheeky thing about glassy eyes. It's, if you can't relax and say what you mean, even if it's hard, even if it needs to make you cry, then you're lying to yourself somewhere. And if you're lying to yourself, you can trust that you can't tell anyone else the truth. And that's just that simple. So I try to be, yeah, I try to be really open. And, and part of that is just like, even just for someone who is coming to terms with like, uh, my goals and that have shifted dramatically and not, not through my goals evolving, but life forces changes, right? And we have to adapt to those things. Like my life returning from this like little starlet having so much fun to, to having to like negotiate becoming a hard worker again and focusing a dream. But then obviously I have a different aim with that now. And if, if the last thing that I can do with the little bit of fame that Heartland afforded me, because the show could end in a couple of years, God knows, might go forever, right? But like, even with Instagram, I'm very aware that I didn't create that following, especially in the beginning. I inherited the following because of that show. So I owe Heartland so much indirectly. They have changed my life intensely. And because of that inherited following, now other people seem to be listening too. And so I'm like, if the last thing I can do with this little tiny sh thing of shame is like not do the hey guys thing and instead be like, this is a human being and we're, we're always half falling apart and half coming together. And the only time we ever seem super this is when we're talking to other people because they're inviting our energy one way or another. And I, I truly believe that. And I don't think that we're going anywhere good as a species if we don't start including all of self to the table and yes it turns out the only way you can actually be honest with yourself is to be completely unabashed in honesty to others it's not to say you have to expose everything about self or not have your own secrets but like you gotta sit and stew in your shit at the same time that you're just sharing yeah i don't trust posturing i just don't it seems Fake. <laughs> I feel like I need to have you on again just to chat more about this because, like, I feel like you're sure. you're Doctor Kerry right now. I love it. It would be, be a great. Not a doctor. To have. <laughs> not not a doctor. Just just. You yeah, can fool nope. us. You can be a psychologist. <laughs> No, you say some real stuff that like gets us thinking. I'm like, oh my goodness, my mind's going a million miles an hour. And maybe that's a big part of it too. Is selfishly. This is what I'm stuck with and working with 100% of the time. So if I get to go blah, blah, and see that other people find this stuff irritatingly addictive and that they're like, I can't stop thinking about this stuff. I'm like, I knew it. Empathy is an infection. It's spread through these kind of ideas because you can't stop once you start. That is incredible. Like, let's definitely have you on in the show again. You'd... Sure, love I'd you. love to. Love you. <laughs> 
Now, we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview. It's It's been a lot of fun. The time has gone so quickly. <laughs> But as a closing statement, and was probably the most important question, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14 year old self? <sighs> Heartache and defeat are the greatest gifts you'll ever receive. Oh, that was very deep, but I, I really love it. <laughs> I think that will help a lot of, uh, not just 14 year olds, but uh, all the young people listening as well. Just actually human beings in general, right? Right. We, we need to go through that to to learn our lessons too. It seems Build stronger. To be, it seems to be, seems to be requisite. Yeah. See, just great for this show. This show is all about, you know, motivation and positivity and, and growing as humans. So you're like, Perfect guest. <laughs> we keep, well, well, yeah, reach out again then. Absolutely. Definitely. And before we go, if if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to in the future, where should they go? Uh, Instagram. I'm all about Instagram. I'm uh, I'm too old to know more than one platform. Yeah. Yeah, I'm that, I'm that guy. Okay. Yeah, go I'm follow Kerry James on Instagram. He's... His whole life's on there, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty unabashed about it, yeah. And very inspiring yeah. and makes me want to get out into nature myself more, so. <laughs> I hope you do. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been so much fun. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. And come back on the show anytime. You're welcome on the show anytime. Consider it your second home. <laughs> cool, I'm in. Thank you. Well, you have my contact, so let's keep in contact and we'll make it happen in the future. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully next time we can have a chat in person after the restrictions are lifted you got any plans to come to australia i would love to go to oz oz is huge on my list yeah i'd love awesome. to then yeah. then you just got to tick it off that bucket list gary done <laughs> well you know who to contact if you come all right <laughs> Deal. Awesome. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. All the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.